Put simply, ray casting is a way you can find a part in a specific location. So for example, if I sent a ray to this part, it would tell me that this part is there, which is very useful in things like weapon systems, because you can detect that a person has been hit. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, just to visually show it, I'm going to make the part that we're going to hit with a ray red, and I'm going to make the part we send the ray from green. You don't have to do this from a part, it's just optional for this tutorial. I'm going to show you with a part to make it simpler. So now we have these two parts, we can get to scripting the ray. I'm going to put it in this part. Insert object, script, get rid of hello world, and then start writing. You need to make a variable for the ray, so we're going to do local ray, and then workspace, colon, raycast. Now as we can see here, there are three parameters to this function, origin, direction, and raycast params. Those are optional, so I'll show you that a bit later. But firstly, we're gonna focus on origin and direction. These are vector three values, and they represent the position you want to start the ray from and the direction you want the ray to go in. Let's start with origin. You don't have to do this with the position of a part. Like I said, I'm just doing that for demonstration purposes. But what you wanna do is put a vector three with the position of the origin in. So I'm going to do vector3.new and then I'm going to copy the C-frame position of the part. So that's all well and good. But now what do we do to get the ray to go to our target part? Well, you might expect just to copy this in and create a new vector 3. But that's not actually what we do. Because this is the direction, what we actually need to do is find the difference between the origin and the target. The equation for this is ray destination minus ray origin. So 0 minus 0 is 0. 0 0.5 minus 12.5 is minus 12. So we put minus 12 there. And then 11 minus 12 is minus 1. And then to show you the result, I'm going to do print ray. If we run the game now, oh, <laughs> I probably should have anchored the part. As you can see, the ray cast was successful. This ray cast result has multiple properties. If you do ray and then dot, it shows you the properties. There's instance, normal, which is the face, distance, material, and position. And then here is the distance that the ray has traveled. It won't be 100% precise, so I recommend rounding it to get that back to one and that back to 11. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the color of this part to green as well. We're not gonna need anything else but ray.instance. Delete that print statement. What we're gonna wanna say is if ray. This just makes sure that our code in this if statement will not run if the raycast was unsuccessful because if it's unsuccessful it will return nil and if we try to do something with nil our game is not going to work so then i'm going to do local part equals ray dot instance and then we're going to do part dot color equals color three dot new and what you can do here is you can click this color wheel and then you can select a color for it to be. I'm going to select green and then it will automatically fill this in for you. So let's see how this works now. And as we can see, this part is green. Once we have the part that the rays hit, we can do basically anything we want with it like get properties of the part or manipulate the part in some way. This is how gun systems find the humanoid that they've hit and remove health from them. I'm going to make a video specifically about gun systems, and this video is a prerequisite to that. So make sure you stay tuned for the gun tutorial. Now, as promised, I'll show you how to use raycast params. First, we want to make another variable. I'll call this raycast params. And then make a new raycast params object. And as you can see, I've already passed this to the raycast function because you need to pass these parameters to the function for this to work. Now we can change some of the properties of the raycast params. You're mainly going to be using filter type and filter descendants instances, but respect can collide makes it so that if can collide is false, a ray cannot query a part, which means it can't return it if it hits it. 
Ignore water is whether it should return water. If ignore water is true, it will not be able to return water cells in terrain. You do not need to worry about collision group unless you're using custom collision groups, in which case any part that cannot be collided with in the collision group that you specify here will not be queried by the ray, which means it cannot be returned if it is here. And this property, I can't find anything on. I've never used it personally, and it seems to be deprecated, but if anyone else knows any different, please let me know in the comments. The others are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm just going to show you filter type, filter descendants instances and respect can collide. I'll show you the filter types first. To demonstrate this, I'm going to try and do the same thing with all of these properties. If I run the game now, because the ray's running from this part to this part, and we've not specified that we don't want this part to be returned, because it is going to be hit because it's in the ray's path, it's going to return that part. I'll show you. Remember earlier on in the video, where we made it so that the part intersected by the ray would become green? As we can see, this is the part that has been intersected by this, blocking this from being reached. But if we don't want this, what can we do? Well, we could use the Raycast params built-in filter functions. Here, we're going to use the Raycast filter type of exclude Raycast params of filter descendants instances. And then we're going to make a list of the things we want to exclude, which is this part in this case. So, in this list, we make a reference to that, workspace.par. Now, if we run this again, because this part has been excluded, the ray did not return this, and instead returned this, so this is now green. We can do the same thing with include filter type, but we're going to change this to the part that we want to change, which is end. Now play, and as you can see, that's had the same effect in this scenario. But what you want to be careful with with filters is that you don't filter out anything that you want the ray to return. Now instead I'll show you how to do that with can collide. Raycast params dot respect can collide true and now in this part's properties we can turn can collide off and then play so as you can see, this part has can collide off, and this means that the ray will not return it. But in this part, there's a property when you have can collide off called can query, which means if you don't want to mess around with raycast params, we can get rid of this respect can collide and just turn off can query, which will have the same effect. So here, delete that, turn can collide off, turn can query off, and as we can see, it's had the same effect. Now, this has been a very quick tutorial, but I hope this has helped you realize that ray casting is not as hard as it seems. I used to think it was difficult until I actually tried it. So hopefully this will give you a good introduction. If you need any more help, feel free to ask me in the comments. And I will also leave the link to the Roblox creator documentation, which will give you some more detail in the description down below. If you liked, subscribed and followed my socials, you'd be doing me a massive favour. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope this has helped you and I will see you in the next tutorial.